We could take a very small sample of tissue less than half the size of a postage stamp, and by day 60, we could have enough cells to cover a football field. Dr. Anthony Atala, a leading figure in the emerging field of regeneration, recently told the Richmond Academy of Medicine researchers are now working on creating complicated structures, things like heart valves and solid organs. Most primary human cell types can now be grown outside the body. Many scientists have, have made many discoveries in many different cell types. But it's interesting, even now, 2013, with all the advances we've had in the field of medicine, there are still certain cell types that we cannot grow or expand outside the body. Dr. Atala is the director of the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine. He says by isolating the cells responsible for wound healing, doctors can grow and expand these cells and reintroduce them to the body in a temporary structure called a scaffold. The scaffold should replicate the biomechanical and structural properties of tissue being replaced. Basically, if we're trying to replace a blood vessel, we're going to use a very different biomaterial than if we're trying to replace a piece of bone. Right? The material itself is going to act as a prosthesis to the cells that are able to take over the functionality. Cells migrate along the scaffold and replace it as the material in the scaffold dissolves. Probably the most important thing of the whole thing are actually the materials, because the cell biology is fairly defined once you figure it out. But the most important thing of the whole equation are really the materials, because the materials are really going to act as the organ and the cells are able to take over. So we use a family of about 20 different biomaterials that we mix and match so that we can replicate the biomechanical and structural properties of tissue being replaced. Dr. Atala says the best results come from a combination of scaffolding, lab-grown and expanded cells, and a growth hormone. So the analogy I like to make is that this is like a hammock. You know, the hammock is the scaffold that we use, and a blanket you lay on the hammock is a blanket of cells that is right over the hammock. But you have all that porosity necessary so if you were to use a water hose through the hammock, you'd get right to the blanket. There are also ongoing experiments at Wake Forest using 3D printers. They are capable of printing cells and biological material, as well as a small two-chambered heart in about 40 minutes. We're using a sacrificial uh, polymer on the outside that holds the gel together. So it, the, the cells are coming down on the gel, the sacrificial polymer that you see on the outside is holding that gel together. That gel's going to harden like a gummy bear. It will be years, Dr. Atala added, before new techniques become commonplace in medicine, and researchers hope to increase the scale and complexity of the structures they engineer. The work that we do is not only complex, but it really does require a multidisciplinary structure. So you're really looking at these from every angle. You're looking at the molecular biology, the cell biology, the material science. You're look, you're, it requires a major team to make sure that these structures really do work and you're doing this testing over and over and over again. John Ogle, WCVE News.